Hello, and welcome to another miniature, I hope miniature, episode of Amiga Retro. Um, we're looking at the innards of the earlier model VIC-20, the one that was at least set on the bottom of this, made in Canada way back in 1982, or maybe slightly earlier. Now, this computer works perfectly fine, well, with a bit of an asterisk attached to it. The switch here, unfortunately, sticks. It sticks so bad after you break it free that as for now, or I should say like right now, the switch here, it's just a single pole, single throw switch, I can barely move it. And if I force that, it almost feels like I break it, but then it will work off and on. It actually engages off and on, turning the power off and on. But after a while, you let it set for a, sorry, you let it sit for a day or two and it will uh, freeze up again. So what I'm going to do in this episode is take this switch out and see if I can fix it because this kind of switch, especially in this form factor, this size, probably will, probably will be very hard to find. If today I could only speak, I apologize. So we shall, uh, I'll take this board out. It looks like it's already been worked on before because there's no uh, shielding and it doesn't have that cardboard uh, foil type uh, shield that was covered over top of this previously. Anyways, enough of that. So I'm going to take this out, a few screws, and uh, when I come back, it will be freed from this plastic key case. Okay, as you can see, I have removed the eight screws that held this into the bottom part of the case. The only thing I need to remove now is this plate here, which should be held on with two screws. I hope, oh, trying to bash into too much stuff. Get my hands in the way because that's what everyone enjoys. Uh, I need to change the size of the bit because reasons. Mechanical ones. Try this again. Ah, much better. And my hands are in the way. I'll try to get out of the way. Nope, there's one. And there's two, I'm hoping. If it's out completely or not, I don't know. Uh, looks promising, I'd say. It's off. Okay, so just need to get that out there and that out here. Oh, my hands, goodness. There we go, it looks like they're all out. Here's these two here. Okay, and now I'm going to flip the board over and see if I can unsolder that. Let me zoom in for you, maybe. And that's all the zoom you get. Oh my goodness, sorry about that. So there's only the top two here that I have to unsolder. And then when I unsolder those, I can pull out the switch and hopefully take it apart and see if I can get it freed up so where it doesn't get stuck after two or three hours of non-operation. And then when you try to turn it on, like I said before, it almost feels like you're going to break it. So let me get the soldering, soldering, sorry, soldering iron hooked up or powered up and we will uh, visit this connection. One moment. Okay, so apparently I lied actually. The uh, this here solders to the case. The switch is actually here and here. So these two connections here are from the switch and this is basically the mounting to secure the switch to the board so it uh, has some kind of stability. So I'm gonna try to remove the solder from all of this and let's see how well that goes. Yes, fun stuff to be had. Okay, let me turn on soldering iron. Beeping going on, so that must be good. And let me try not to get stuck on things. Turn the heat up a bit. To about 380 Celsius. And soldering iron is up to temperature. I like to touch these up a bit with some extra flux. So 
just so the solder sucker can do its thing. And same thing with these connections. This, well, not too bad. Thought this might require more heat, but it's actually not too bad. So there we go. This on here. Whatever. Okay, soldering iron away. Turn that off for now, and I'm gonna turn on my solder. Sorry, my desoldering station. And I will try to remove the solder once it gets up to temperature. If not, I don't know. I can't see much here. Okay, okay. That's one. I have to let it melt at first. Stuck on the sides a bit, this one is. Try this one here. Yeah, that one's got a bit more solder to deal with. I'm gonna turn the temperature up just a bit to about 390 on the desoldering station. Oh, the beeps. There we go. Try this again. Yeah, it's a bit, it's just not quite the right size. I think that's out. This one, not so much. Let me put this away. Take a look at that. See now the, the switch is kind of freed up. It's kind of funny because of the, uh, the heat. It seemed to have freed it up a bit. So I'm gonna continue with removing this regardless and uh, see if I can get that out. I could use a desoldering braid on this, but I, to be honest with you, I suck at desoldering braids, like a lot. Okay, let me see if I can remove that a bit. No, not really. Okay. Might take a bit more persuasion. I believe it's free here. It's just uh, particles everywhere. Um, getting those freed up. So I'm going to try the desoldering wick and see what happens. Because I'm not really good at desoldering grades. I'm gonna get a bit of flux as well, which I happen to have here. Oh, sorry about that. Put a bit of flux here, and a bit of flux here, and we'll see. It's uh, the non-focusing camera. Oh, look, look at that. So yeah, this is the, the flux that I use, the new clean flux paste in French as well. What do you know? So there you go. I get that off of eBay, I believe. No, sorry, uh, Amazon. Yes, Amazon indeed. Let me continue with this exciting task that I have here. Uh -huh. So, this is supposed to wick the solder out of the holes. Yes, in theory, you can see it pulling some of the solder out. Put a little bit more here. That hole is cleared up, and let's finish this one. Looks good. Gonna do it with this side as well. I can see what I'm doing. Okay, same idea. That should let go. There's a bit attaching it to the side here. I can see it. One moment. Yes, I can see that it's not working. It should be okay. Let's see what Let's see what happens. Let, let me turn off all of my electrical consumption devices and 
Let's see if we can get that out without wrecking anything. Oh. It looks like it has come out. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that nice? So it's been removed. Get this stuff out of the way. And uh, as you can see, or can you? Yes, it's right here. There, there, there we go. As you can see, it is um, out and pretty good shape as well. So I'm gonna put this aside and zoom back out for you. One moment, as you stare at my anti-static plate. Okay, so if I can kind of move this there. So what I hope to do is focus, is try to take this apart to get into the innards of this switch because this switch gets really stiff over time. And like I said before, trying to find a replacement for this, uh, short of buying another VIC-20, the older model as well. Remember the other ones use the standard um, Commodore 64 type switch. This one is unique. It's just single pole, single throw switch. Like that. That's it. So yeah, that'd be hard to find. So I'm going to try to see if I can get this apart and uh, maybe lube up the innards, clean it up a bit. Um, we shall see, I guess. I shall be right back. Okay, so I have a thin flathead screwdriver and there are, as you can see, tabs on the top and the bottom. They just crimp around to the, sorry, crimp around to the side of the plastic on the bottom and the top. Bottom. Top, yes, I had it backwards. You get the picture. Four of them. So if I pry them up, I'm hoping I can pop this off. And I'm also hoping that I can do this without moving it outside of the cam camera shot. Oh, there's stuff everywhere. One second here. Okay, so I'm going to try to bend this up. It does bend a bit, but this isn't doing what I exactly wanted it to, so I might need a smaller screwdriver. One second. Okay, slightly smaller flathead screwdriver, and we shall see if this will, maybe I'll just pry this whole thing up, shall we? Oh, there we go. So I just pried up on the, uh, underneath here without trying to bend these tabs and I'll do the same thing on the bottom here between the uh, yeah we're still good um, between here the two oh without taking my finger out careful now I wish I could bend these tabs a bit more but I have a feeling I really don't have that option. Now, I should be able to pull this forward like so. Oh, something's happening. Yeah, I heard parts come loose. Yeah, there we go. Inside there. Doesn't seem to be too complicated. Oh, oh there we go. Parts everywhere. And that's not that bad, actually. I expected springs to fly out and whatever, but... um. Not too bad, so that's the plastic piece. And inside, I'll put that aside, we have the inside piece. So, and that was it. That's weird. I was expecting like more gunk and stuff to be in here, so I don't know why the rocker was so um, stuck. Because there's really nothing in here that seems to get in the way. So I'm gonna put some lubrication, I guess on here and on this side where it uh, kind of pivots inside here. And uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Interesting, now I was just expecting more in here to cause it to seize up, but apparently not. 
Okay, let's see what I can do with this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my uh, dielectric grease, which I'm going to use as a lubricant for the um, plastic parts, I guess, and some, some of the metal contact, not the actual contact part, but where the plastic contacts the metal to give it a bit better lubrication. Hopefully this will work. For how long? I don't know, but oh well. Let me put on my extra spectacles so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so. So what I've done, let's see if this is in frame, which it is, I just gotta stay in this area. I have scraped off very lightly without putting like any extra grooves, but just to scrape the, uh, what should we call it? Hmm, oxidization off of the contact here and on the bottom here. So that this switch here connects between here and here. And this is the, uh, where are we at? Okay, this here is the, uh, the contact that will strike this part. And this part here is the other part of the switch here. So that's what connects between here and here. Yes. Okay. So what I will do is I will attempt to put this <coughs> in here carefully oh. oh there you go just like that i see it sitting in there and the uh, the contacts are now sorry are now going to be lined up and then now i just have to put i'm going to put a bit of the dielectric grease on the plastic parts here so basically the part in here and the part with this plastic nub here contacts down here Yes, and I always have to get out to make sure it's in shot, because zoom, yes. So what I'll do is I'll uh, put a bit of dielectric grease on that, and hopefully I can um, put this back together again, maybe. Oh. oh my, I can't get the lid off of this. Oh, success, okay. Uh, I think I'm, without making a mess, I'm going to, because you have to push it down on this for it to come out. I'm going to put that on a piece of paper or something. Thus I don't get a mess everywhere. I will return. Okay, so I got some of it here on the paper. That way it doesn't go everywhere. This stuff is pretty slimy, because that's what it's intended to be. Kind of greasy, but it's a, a grease that'll stay around for a while for several years at least. And I'm just gonna use that as the lubricant on the end here. Not too much is required. And then I'm gonna put some in the grooves here when I'm ready. Okay, I think I got it now. Oh, my zoom is gone. One second, come on. Oh, there we go. So as you can see, I've got it mounted inside here. It is fairly not focused. And the pegs are in the correct spot. Uh, get that out of the way before I get my hands covered with more goop. I didn't want to put too much of this grease on there, but it should be enough. And being dielectric, it's not going to interfere with the electrical conductivity or whatnot. So what I'm going to do is try to put this thing back on again. And I have to remember that this, oh sorry, this here has to be on the bottom of the switch. So same spot as here. So I will reattach that and I will be back if I have success. And even if I don't have success, I shall share you my non-success with you. I shall return. Come on, button, click. Once again, I have returned. Here is the switch, fully assembled, and of course, slightly out of focus, my camera sucks. But as you see what I'm pointing to at the moment, those tabs were splayed too far apart, like the main bracket, so I had to bend those tabs straight out so I could get it close to the body as possible on either side. So everything looks okay at this point. The switch is a bit stiff at first, but not like it was the first time. And of course, like before, if you keep rocking it back and forth, it seems to be fine. 
And this is a dub, by the way, so I may not be talking exactly what I'm supposed to because no microphone when I recorded it. But anyways, as I was pointing to, I'm going to mount this into that hole or holes there uh, after I drop it, apparently. With no worse for wear. So I will install that by soldering as flush as I can to the motherboard. I have no idea what I was saying at this point, but la da la la la. Oh, I'm pointing at it again for some reason, and yet yeah, look, behold, there's pins, and it's not greasy anymore, I guess. Anyways, enough of my guessing at what I was saying. I will be right back. I also lost the audio in this footage, and the reason why this is happening is I bought a new microphone for my camera. And of course, it has to be turned on manually. It does not auto power on or auto power off. And of course, to save battery life, I'm turning it off sometimes between shoots and I forget to turn it back on. Thus, yet another dub. But anyway, the, all this uh, segment of the video covers is the reinstallation of the switch, making sure it, of course, is flush to the board. So basically the case mounted part of the, um, you know, the stabilizer switch is firmly down before I solder it and I also make sure I make a good clean solder connection with the actual switch parts which is the lower two terminals that you see here. And uh, now on to the regular audio part of the program. So as you can see it is together. Let's see if it turns on. It should, I don't, the switch should still function. I don't see why not. But you never know. You never know. Glossy monitor picture happening here. Extremely reflective. Can double as a mirror if you need it to. Oh, sorry. Okay, power needs to be hooked up, doesn't it? I don't have the power. I will be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my AC power supply plugged into the AC input. We should be good to go. And my fridge just turned on because it can. One moment. I will take care of that. There, silence, somewhat. Okay, here goes absolutely nothing. And I believe I have the scan doubler hooked up as well. Oh, we got power. The switch is a bit stiff, but movable. Yeah, there we go. It's a Aspect ratio is slightly off. I can change that on the monitor. Uh, it's a bit fuzzy, but it's the output of these things, composite and whatnot. And uh, it's a bit better the second time and then the third time. So just a bit stiff. It's doing what it was before, but it didn't seem to be quite as bad. Except for maybe shaving down some of the plastic, that little nub that uh, acts as the rocker and very little. I'm not sure how to save this switch, just age seems to have pretty much made it almost useless, but we'll see how well this hangs in there. And that wraps up this exciting video, if you want to call it that. Anyway, hopefully I can uh, get a bit more time out of the switch. And uh, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it. I think I said that already. Almost. Anyways, as always, Thanks for watching.